Hello and welcome everybody to our fourth episode of Docker series on our channel Cloud Server. So in this video, we're going to learn and uh, play around with the uh, lab based on persistent data and Docker volumes and volume mount. So basically, we'll be focusing here on the MySQL image. So we'll be pulling uh, the MySQL image from the Docker Hub and then we will be playing around MySQL containers for the uh, resolution of uh, persistent data and Docker volumes and mount bind. So in this episode, we're going to learn and discuss about uh, what persistent data is and what types of uh, problems it creates while using Docker uh, and containers. So we'll also learn how to eradicate those problems by the use of uh, data volumes and bind mounts, which is uh, uh, described by Docker. So let's move on to what persistent data is. Persistent data, it denotes the information that is uh, quite infrequently accessed and not likely to be modified. Like if you have some data that is going to remain static throughout your entire procedure of using that services. So that is uh, likely to be denoted as persistent data. So at first, I'd like to give a small uh, basic walkthrough that uh, why uh, in which uh, in which form or in which thoughts the containers were created. So containers were created to be immutable and ephemeral. So created to be immutable, it means that um, the services was kind of like static and uh, it wasn't designed to change, uh, have any changes inside them. So and ephemeral means uh, is only designated to use only for a short period of time. So containers were initially created to be immutable and ephemeral and uh, they also meant that they were um, they were meant to create use the services and dispose traditionally so but after uh, the uh, extensiveness and versatility of docker uh, kept growing in our market uh, in the market of IT. So then uh, we have faced uh, the issues of persistent data, but later Docker introduced us to uh, data volumes and bind mounts. So we're going to talk and discuss shortly about that. So let's dive in deeper about what uh, Docker data volumes are. So in order to understand what uh, doc, uh, Docker data volumes are and how does it work, I need to tell you something. Every container, it is designed to store the unique data in uh, their own UFS, which is also known as Union File System. So it totally depends upon the container, the life of the container. So if you create a container and the unique data is stored in the UFS of the container and you somehow or some kind of like destroy the container or remove the container, your unique data is kind of likely to be lost uh, with your container. So what Docker data volumes basically does is it helps us to create a special location outside of the container UFS. So it creates uh, a special file location where you can store your unique data. So that completely doesn't uh, depends upon the UFS of the container. So that also doesn't depend upon the life of the container. So with the help of uh, data volumes, we can uh, remove the dependency of cross container removal, which I've already told you. And it also helps us to att attach the unique data to whatever container we want. So we can use the data of a container that is created an hour ago and then it is destroyed. And then we can use that unique data uh, after creating, creating the container after two hours or something. So you can like play around with the, the unique data as per your requirements. 
in order to uh, have a better experience for the transparency and good visualization in this topic i would like to introduce you to a scenario let's say you have a container up and running and you have your unique data stored in the premise of the uh, union file system of that container and you up uh, and an update comes to your EMS, which service you are using in the uh, container. Then you decide to destroy the container that you are using and download the updated image and create a container from the updated emails. Then you are most likely to uh, lose your data, lose your unique data that you have previously uh, stored in the container. But uh, if you reboot or restart your container, uh, you aren't going to lose the uh, da unique data as the UFS will remain intact. And to, well, to uh, remove this limitation, Docker has introduced us to uh, Docker uh, data volumes and bind mounts. So now what remains to talk about is the concept and logic of bind mounts in Docker. So basically the idea and the logic of bind mounts in Docker is quite similar to the Docker data volumes. In case of Docker data volumes, we, we specify a unique name for the volume and then we use that volume as per require of our requirements. Uh, in case of bind mounts, we specify a location where uh, the uh, the unique data is stored in our host uh, host operating system, and then we then link it with the container's uh, path location where the unique data is stored. So what it uh, does is it keeps a copy of the data that is stored in our host location to the container's location and run it. So we have the um, so we have the unique data both on the container and uh, our host uh, uh, on our host machine. So if we destroy the container, we are most likely to have the data not destroyed in our host machine. So what it does is it helps us to link the container path to the host path. As per the traditional idea of persistent data in Docker and containers, they faced a lot of issues uh, while preserving the volumes and the unique data. So now as time passed by, they evolved to uh, introducing a volume uh, command in defaults uh, for the databases and everything. So to have a um, better clarity, I would like to show you some scenario on my SQL. So I'll be first pulling up the email stock book my SQL. So using the Voltag latest. Okay, it says that I have already in my library and it's up to date. So I'll be creating a container Docker run. I'll be doing it in a detached mode, giving it a name my sql and the name of my image my sql with the tag latest that's optional so a container is created so here we have the container created and we can also uh, inspect this container by using docker inspect container and we give this container id So we paste it here. We will be needing a space here. So uh, it gives all the uh, related information that is required for the container. And as we can uh, go up, so here we have it. It specifies a volume that is stored in slash var slash library slash mysql which is located inside of the container itself so uh, I have to tell you that uh, if the volume is specified even if you delete the container the volumes uh, the volumes are going to remain intact but if the volumes are not specified the data the unique data which is the persistent data they are going to get uh, uh, removed too so uh, I'd like to, okay, volume. So it's going to be here and let me go through 
here. And so I can also now list the volume by using the command docker vo docker volume ls. So you can see this is my volume name. I can also inspect this volume name using docker inspect volume and I use the volume the volume name volume ID. So we use it here. I'll just copy and paste it there. So you see that it's a uh, driver labels none. So name is this and options null scope local. So it's uh so it's there. So I would like to now delete my container and see whether the volume it uh, remains there or not. So I'll just I'm just gonna be Docker. Uh, I'll just first stop the container. Docker stop. Uh, so at first let me list my container ID. So Docker PS. So here is my container ID. And so I'll just be using docker uh, stop a container ID and it stopped and docker remove the container. So now let's check whether we have the container or not. So we don't have the container, it's deleted. But we can see the volume, docker volume ls. Okay, you have the volume here even after I delete the container. So the concept of volume, and that's uh, quite intact here. So now uh, let's try to uh, use this volume uh, in another container. So, uh, okay. I'll just be using this volume. So I'll be uh, running a container docker run in a detached mode. So I'll be giving this volume name. So, uh, so I'll be providing a volume tag by hyphen V and providing the volume name. So it's, it's my container ID that I've deleted. So I'll just copy this once again. So here we have it. So I'll just copy it, I'll just paste it, and I'll be specifying the location of um, I'll be specifying the location of slash var slash uh, library slash uh, MySQL MySQL and I'll be giving the name of my container MySQL and I'll be providing the emails MySQL providing the tag latest so what it uh, basically does is after uh, every time i run a container of my sql it's going to create a volume by default uh, but if i specify the old volume to while creating the container the old volume is going to get uh, replaced by the new default so it's going to basically it's going to use the same volume so let's check whether we have a new volume or not so hopefully we didn't um, need it so docker volume ls so yeah we have only one volume but if you run it without the volume name but we can also have our own name on this volume so let it be say my sql db so you can specify the name of the volume as per your requirement so okay we have that container already run uh, with the container name mysql so i'll just be going on with the mysql too so the containers created and docker psa you can see two containers now we can see docker volume ls you have one mysql db and another the default created from the first container that i've deleted so and if you want to use this mysql db to another container you can provide the name mysql container mysql db 
uh, to specify the volume uh, followed by the path to the volume path of the container. So, uh, so that's basically it about the uh, Docker data volumes and the persistent data. Thank you for watching the fourth episode of the Docker series. Stay tuned for the fifth episode where we will be learning about how to host a static website using the concept of volume bind mount.